I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about things you can do beyond wearing a mask and washing your hands. Now, nothing I'm saying here is a cure. I'm not making any promises or guarantees. What I am saying, these are totally benign things that you can do that may help keep your immune system strong, and may help prevent you from getting serious diseases. And of course, in a COVID-19 world, I'm certainly not making claims. Please understand, I've got to make sure I'm covering my fanny here. But this is the research. These are the things that I do. How about that? I'll put it that way. Uh, there's something called curcumin, which is found in turmeric. Turmeric is a spice, and uh, curcumin is a component of it. And curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric. And there's solid evidence in science and numerous studies vouching for its anti-inflammatory effects. And again, with things like COVID-19, it's an inflammatory reaction. The body becomes inflamed. The immune system goes crazy. And so we want to try to get on an anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, You want to avoid the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the seven foods everybody should be avoiding. Wheat and dairy being the ones that cause the most inflammation. Um, So again, is there any harm in changing your diet and eating better? No. Is there any harm in taking a turmeric supplement? No. So do what you can to try to keep yourself as healthy as possible. So curcumin, which is the component of turmeric that uh, has been researched, aids in the management of what's called oxidative and inflammatory conditions, metabolic syndrome, arthritis, anxiety, and hyperlipidemia, which is uh, fat in the blood. Most of these uh, benefits can be attributed to its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. So along with several other supplements, curcumin has been identified as having particularly benefit, uh, a strong benefit against viruses such as COVID-19. I'm not making promises here that I'm curing COVID-19. A potential inhibitor of COVID-19 main protease, it's called, um, from several uh, medicinal plant compounds by molecular docking study. This is a post done in a, a, a March 13th, uh, 2020. It's on preprint, preprints.org. Curcumin are, uh, is a compound along with several others that have been found to inhibit COVID-19 protease. Okay, so it's, it's been found to have, uh, help with pr- uh, COVID-19 yeah, not making any promises. Studies have shown that curcumin is an anti-inhibitory uh, effect, uh, has an inhibitory effect on virus-induced cytokine storms. That's the key statement. It has an inhibitory effect on virus-induced cytokine storms. If you're just tuning in, what happens is with COVID-19, you don't die from the virus. Your, your, immune, your virus, the virus gets in your nasal passages, goes into your throat, goes into your lungs, sets up shop. The immune system attacks the virus in your lungs. The immune system sometimes is overwhelmed, and then it sends in a second wave of cytokines, it's called, and that's called the cytokine storm. The cytokines now start killing off the good cells as well as the bad cells, which can cause an inflammatory reaction, can cause the cells in the lungs to die, and can build up fluid in the lungs. That's the thing that gets you. That's why they put you on a respirator. The lungs don't have as much uh, availability to absorb oxygen, and the lungs are getting swollen, so we're trying to force air into the lungs. There are some studies showing that the respirator might not work very well and could actually make the problem worse, but that's, a, that's an opinion story. I'm not going to go into that right now. But if we can get something that can help the virus-induced cytokine storm, that's something I think should be blasted across every news report everywhere in the world. Again, it's not a cure, but these are things that we should be looking at. Uh, that, that, recur, that occurs as a result of overproduction of immune cells and pro-inflammatory what's called cytokines with the immune cells. This too suggests it may be particular. This suggests it may be particular use against COVID-19, considering the cytokine storm triggered by severe and critical COVID-19 infection is what ends up killing the patients. So if we can calm down that cytokine storm, that's what we want to do. Recently, a scientific review in Frontiers of Cell and Developmental Biology, June 12th, 2020, recently, reports curcumin might be useful in cases of severe viral pneumonia, such as COVID-19, according to the authors. The uh, coronavirus infections, including SARS, co- uh, MERS, uh, SARS COVID nineteen, causes daunt- is, uh, causes daunting diseases that can be fatal because lung failure 
and a systemic cytokine storm. Systemic means it goes through the whole body. Development of uh, coronavirus evoked pneumonia is associated with excessive inflammatory responses in the lungs, known as cytokine storms, which results in pulmonary uh, edema, atelectasis, lung injury, and fatal acute respiratory distress syndrome. No drugs are available to suppress the overly, uh, overly immune response mediated lung injury effectively. There are no drugs right now that can calm down this cytokine storm. In light of the low toxicity and its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral activity, it's plausible to speculate that curcumin, the active ingredient in turmeric, can be used as a therapeutic drug for pneumonia. Why isn't this everywhere? Why isn't everybody talking about this? I don't know. That's why we do these shows. Uh, in this review, we summarize the mounting evidence uh, obtained from preclinical studies using animal models of lethal pneumonia where curcumin exerts protective effects by regulating the expression of pro- and anti-inflammatory uh, uh, factors. So it can help control the inflammatory reaction, which can then help calm down everything. So it's preventative. It has a therapeutic role uh, in viral infections and cytokine storms. So there's no reason why this shouldn't be tried. And that's the thing is we haven't found any reason why you shouldn't be trying this. Uh, one important mechanism behind curcumin's benefit is its ability to modulate the immune response. When I say modulate, control it. It can increase it or decrease it. That's the neat part about it. Now, there's different types of curcumin. You can get a curcumin that is uh, extracted from the turmeric in a concentrated form, and you would think, well, wait a minute, that sounds like a good thing. If I can concentrate down the curcumin, the active ingredient, that's what I want to do. It doesn't work that way. Because what happens is, we find that supplements work well in a symbiotic relationship. What that means is they work well together. They play well together. So if I'm going to take just vitamin D, okay, vitamin D, vital for the immune system. Another thing I wish people were doing is when they're testing for uh, COVID-19 tests, I wish they were taking a vitamin D test as well. And if you're low in vitamin D, you want to get your vitamin D levels to 30 nanograms per milliliter or higher. The higher the vitamin D levels the lower the risk of COVID-19. Now, to play devil's advocate, I'm going to come back around again to curcumin, don't worry. To play devil's advocate is people that have high, high vitamin D levels are probably healthier anyway. So I'm going to argue with myself on this one. Yeah, but those are probably healthier people anyway. Yeah, but it's a simple, easy, very inexpensive thing we can do is get our vitamin D levels up. Make sure it's vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. Vitamin D2 is the synthetic version of D3. So we want to take vitamin D3, uh, on our website, drjoe.com, is the vitamin D that I take. Vitamin D works well, but it works better with vitamin K2. That's why in our supplements, we add vitamin K2 to our vitamin D3. It's pretty simple. Why not do that? I said it's the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever buy is getting your vitamin D levels up. If you don't want to do that, okay, get out in the sun for 20 minutes a day. Go for a walk. You know, wear short sleeve shirt and the shorts and get out in the sun every day, if spring, fall, summer, and fall. Um, in the winter, you're not going to get your vitamin D. There's no way you can get it from the sun unless you're living close to the equator. And so if that's the case, then you definitely have to uh, take the supplement. But unless you can get out in the sun half hour a day and absorb the sun and not shower right away, because when you shower, it washes off the vitamin D before it can get absorbed. It's UVB rays in the sun that interact with uh, cholesterol in the skin to create the vitamin D to get absorbed. So if you wash it off right away, you're not going to get all the benefits. So Get out, go for a walk, go get out in the garden. I love gardening, so I get out in the garden almost every day. Um, you can do it early in the morning, 9, 10 o'clock. You're going to get good rays. 12 o'clock, it's a little intense, a little too much. Um, walk to the store. If you live close to a store, don't drive, walk. Get a dog, take your dog for a walk. Take your neighbor's dog for a walk. I'm sure neighbors would love to have you walk their dog for them. But get out in the sun or take your vitamin D. So if I was Grand Poobah the universe, I'd be checking everybody's vitamin D levels. And if it was low, I'd get their, their vitamin D levels up. The curcumin, extremely inexpensive. In fact, in my garden, um, I have turmeric growing like crazy. Now, curcumin is a component of turmeric. Got it? Turmeric is growing crazy in my garden. I have to put beautiful flowers and beautiful leaves. It really is a nice looking plant. But all I did was I had some old turmeric that I didn't use. I threw it in my garden as compost. And it took root, and it grows rhizoids, and it's growing everywhere. I have to cut it down because it blocks the sun from my other plants. So uh, you can, again, you can grow your own if you want to, but it's really inexpensive to buy. And what we're finding is the studies that they did were on curcumin, which is an extract of the turmeric. Awesome. There are also studies that the whole root 
is better than the curcumin because it works synergistically or symbiotically with the other components that are found in the root. That's why I created Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. There's 73 ingredients in Essential Source. And it, it can't be duplicated. We have trying, people have tried to say, I'm going to make something like it. And nobody comes close to Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I've tried, I think, every other product on the market. It's my favorite by far. But the thing is that when we add fruits and vegetables in a powder form, and then we add prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes, it works symbiotically. And a lot of the research hasn't, we don't know when you take 72 ingredients, which two and what five and what 10 are giving you the benefits, but the benefits are there. So the minimum supplements I would recommend everybody take, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, and if not out in the sun, vitamin D. Again, it's the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever buy is getting healthy. And the nice part about this is the things I teach you when it comes to getting well, you're going to save so much money if you're eating good foods. Because the junky foods, it's going to weaken your immune system. It'll make you sick. You have to go to the doctor. You're not going to work as hard. But even dollar for dollar, you can buy a can of organic beans for a dollar. And that would feed, if you throw some brown rice in there, you're going to feed two people with it. You cannot feed two people for $1.50 if you're eating meats and dairy products and eggs and butter and cheese and yogurt and ice cream. Can't do that. So if you understand how inexpensive it is, now there are a little more expensive foods like artichokes might be a little more expensive, but if you really are on a budget and you want to eat healthy, there's no way around it. You're going to save a ton of money and feel better. So that, we're talking about symbiotic relationships. So we're talking about the curcumin, which is great. It works better in the whole root form. And on our website, drjoe.com, we have a supplement, Dr. Joe's uh, turmeric, uh, and it's a whole root. And that's the one that I take every day because it helps the immune system. It helps with inflammation. Uh, there have been studies that it can help fight cancer cells. So I'm not saying we have a cure for anything. I'm going to say that a thousand times over in case you're just joining us. But I want to let you know that these are the things, these are the easy, inexpensive steps that you can be doing. And when it comes to food, you have to eat anyway. You might as well eat good food. So you say, well, Dr. Joe, I can't afford supplements. Well, you can't afford not to take supplements, actually. But I, countless patients have told me, Dr. Joe, I eat less food when I take my supplements because I'm not as hungry. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. And when you give the body high levels of nutrition, chances are you're going to eat a lot less. Get the bad food out of the house, the breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. Get them out of the house, especially in a COVID crisis like this. Get it out of the house because you're going to be tempted to eat it. Eat more fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. There are cheap fruits and there are expensive fruits. Apples might be cheap. Eat apples then. Well, Dr. Joe, I can't afford, uh, I don't know, papaya or whatever it is. Well, don't eat papaya then. Okay, eat cheaper foods. And so it's better to eat like canned pineapple than it would be to eat uh, uh, cheese, for example. So you can get away with this very, very inexpensively. Anyway, we're talking about curcumin, and I got, uh, went down a rabbit hole. 2018 uh, Journal of Food and Drug Analysis found curcumin effective that inhibit, inhibits influenza A infection. 2019, Frontiers in Microbiology highlighted curcumin's antiviral effects against influenza virus, hepatitis C, and HIV. I don't know what else I can do to convince you that these are things you should be doing. Numerous in vivo and in vitro, that means in humans, and uh, live and in, in, in test tubes, uh, studies have been shown that curcumin and its analogs markedly inhibit the production and release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, IL-1, IL-6, IL-8, and TFN. Those are the things that cause the cytokine storm that cause the people to get very, very sick and die. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be taking turmeric. Uh, it can uh, reduce the degree of uh, airway inflammation, which of course is important for breathing, uh, improves pneumonia and preventing development uh, and improves uh, and helps prevent the development of severe pneumonia, uh, improves lung index, which means your breathing capacity. According to Frontiers in Cell and Developmental Biology Review, uh, the available research, quote, suggests that curcumin administration could be both prophylactic, preventive, and therapeutic effects on virus-induced pneumonia and mortality. So there it is. Studies are there. Research is there. Furthermore, you, uh, while human trials on curcumin and coronavirus are still lacking, which they are, again, I'm not saying I have a cure here, in light of its preventive and therapeutic role in viral infection and cytokine storms common to all viral inf infections, Curcumin could conceivably be considered as an attractive agent for the management of coronavirus infections. And this is a quote from Frontiers in Cell and Developmental Biology. So the researchers are saying it. The doctors are saying it. Everybody's saying it. Why aren't you doing it? Well, haven't heard about it yet. 
That's why I take the whole root supplement, uh, the whole root, because it works better than a curcumin in a lot of research. Um, and it's pretty in in inexpensive. If you want to grow your own, if you're a farmer, plant some. It'll grow like crazy. And then you can pick your own if you want to. Uh, so curcumin is something you might want to consider adding to your uh, repertoire to keep yourselves healthy. God, I got so much more to cover. All right, omega-6 fatty acids. This can impair your immune system and increase your risk of COVID. Now, omega-6 omega fatty acids, you're supposed to have a balance between omega-3s and omega-6s. The omega-6s are important, just like omega-3s are, but most people have a balance of one omega-6. You're supposed to have one omega-6 to one omega-3. Most people have 10, 20, 30 omega-6s to one omega-3. And at that level, something that's good for you, small amounts of omega-6s, actually become extremely toxic and can make you really, really, really sick. And a lot of diseases can be solved if we reduce our intake of omega-6 fatty acids, or it's at least bettered by taking omega-6s. I never want to say I have a cure for anything. It's man-made processed, nutrient deficient, and toxic foods that are driving all chronic diseases. They're driving heart disease, stroke, hypertension, cancer, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and macular degeneration. I have macular degeneration. I was told several years ago, you're going blind. Stuff happens. Good luck with that. Every year since, if you go to our website, drjoe.com, type in macular degeneration, I've had pictures taken of my eyes, the back of my eyes, and every year my macular degeneration is getting better and better and better. And if you read the article that goes with it, it has a lot to do, I believe, super greens and essential source, cutting out my omega-6 uh, omega fatty acids, eating a good healthy diet. Um, somebody just sent through uh, uh, social media, uh, somebody made a comment. They said, how is it that you're looking younger and younger every year? I saw you on a, v a VCR tape 20 years ago, and you're looking younger and younger. Well, I'm not better than you. I don't have any special genetics or anything like that. Just take care of yourself. So what most people look at as normal is really average. Average is you take 100 people, divide by 100, and that's the average. Most people are just beating themselves up, and they look horrible. When you take care of yourself, it really works. If there was a better way to live, I would be doing it. If there were better supplements to take than super greens and essential source and Dr. Joe's vitamin D and that nitric oxide that I take every day for circulation uh, and uh, glutathione, oh, got to cover glutathione, huge player in your immune system. If there were better supplements, I'd be taking them. If there were better foods to eat, I'd be eating them. If there was better ways to treat my spine and my nervous system than chiropractic care, I'd be doing it. And we are going to introduce things like PRP and stem cells very soon into our offices because that has been shown now to help regenerate, in many cases, uh, joints. Again, no promises, no guarantees. So I'm always adding new things to my research to find out what I can do to look good but also feel good and be healthy. The key is really to be healthy. So all that's coming, and that's why I love that you're listening to these shows because we're teaching you things every single day that you can do to get well and stay well. And as soon as something new better comes out, I'm going to let you know about it. So we talked about man-made processed foods. Um, there's four things, basically, that if we can cut them out are, are great. Uh, Nutrient-deficient foods like flour, wheat flour, uh, sugar, polyunsaturated vegetable oils, and trans fats. So bad fats, bad food, I call it the seven deadly sins, and all of them kind of fit into that. Uh, white flour and uh, white, refined white wheat flour came around, uh, came in the 1880s, and trans fats in, 2000, in 1911. So they've been around for a long time. These are the foods that drive almost all chronic diseases and degeneration. Uh, they've narrowed it down to four. I think we should extend that a little bit to alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And then from that, we would add the bad fats. So again, it's kind of like George Carlin. If you're old enough to remember George Carlin, he did the, the seven words you can never say on television, and I won't say them. Um, and then later on in his career, he says, I realize there's more than seven. And he rolls out this scroll across the, the stage and he goes, starts listing all these other words you can't say on television. Now you can say some of them. Um, but really the basis are going to be the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And uh, we talked about curcumin as a supplement. Absolutely. Vitamin D, absolutely. Uh, glutathione is really important for liver function and immune. So if you want to know what I take, okay, this is it's up to you what you do with this information. I take Dr. Joe Super Greens, Dr. Joe Essential Source, glutathione, uh, omega-3 fatty acids every day, B-complex every day, adrenal support, because the adrenal glands help with energy, inflammation, and uh, hormone. I take uh, men's hormone support, because as I get older, my testosterone levels are dropping. I want to make sure I'm giving my body the raw materials to build the testosterone that I need. I take estrogen regulator, because it prevents my testosterone from converting it to estrogen. And all these are ingredients that are found in foods. Estrogen regulators, methane. Where do we find that? Broccoli. 
Brussels sprouts, cruciferous vegetables. Uh, DHEA is uh, what's found in the hormone support. The DHEA is the raw material that becomes uh, my uh, feeds my adrenals. So those are the supplements I take every oh and omega three fatty acids. And I better jump to that because I wanted to cover omega-3s too. So we covered the bad fats. Bottom line is uh, don't eat bad fats. If a fat ever tastes rancid, stop eating it, throw it away. Those rancid fats are so dangerous. I covered the macular degeneration already. Um, The omega-3 fatty acids also can help prevent the cytokine storm. You've heard about the lethal effects of COVID-19. How many times have I said it? It's the cytokine storm. It's the immune system going crazy inside the body. So supplements and strategies that have been identified as capable of modulating immune responses and suppressing the cytokine storm. Bottom line, vitamin D optimization. Melatonin. How about that? Melatonin. What do you think about melatonin? Melatonin helps you sleep. When I say melatonin, you think it comes in your your brain and helps you sleep. Well, you can get melatonin from an outside source, but the problem with that is if you take too much melatonin, your body stops producing its own. Your body produces its own melatonin starting way back in the digestive system. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, chances are you're not breaking down your proteins properly. The proteins break down into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain and in your digestive system. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which of course helps you sleep, but now we're finding is a huge component of immune function. It can also help detoxify heavy metals from the body. So the more research we do on melatonin, we always thought it was this little innocent hormone up in your brain that helps you sleep. It's a huge modulator of many, many uh, functions in the body. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, chances are you want to come see us because we may be able to adjust or pull your stomach down away from the diaphragm because in most cases, that's why you're not digesting your food. And then you start digesting your food again. 85% of the patients I test have some digestive problems. And we were able to adjust or pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, get them on a good diet. Then you're able to break the proteins into amino acids. The amino acids become neurotransmitters, which become melatonin. Melatonin can help with the immune function. The omega-3 fatty acids, the best form of omega-3, as far as I'm concerned, is algae oil. Algae oil is the purest form of omega-3. I take that every day. It's on the website, drjoe.com. And the algae oil is great for brain function. It's great for anti-inflammatory. It's great for the immune system. So that's another supplement I would recommend. And most people think, well, I'm going to do fish oil for omega-3 fatty acids. I'm not a fan of fish oil. Most, I can't say most, but a lot of the fish oils on the market are uh, tainted. They have heavy metals in it, like mercury. And I did a show on heavy metals. It's on the website, drjoe.com. So uh, you really want to get the body healthy. So really, in a nutshell, avoid the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Supplement-wise, specifically for the cytokine storm, vitamin D, glutathione, um, the omega-3 fatty acids are going to be really important. Super greens an essential source as a minimum supplement. Uh, everybody should be taking that anyway. Uh, avoiding the rancid oils is going to be really important. And so there's a lot of things you can do beyond just wearing a mask and washing your hands that can be extremely helpful. Again, there's no guarantees, there's no promises, but there's no harm in doing this. Again, the medical doctor's oath is above all, do no harm. Hippocratic oath. So you can do these things and there's not going to be any downside to it. And there's a lot of upside to it as well. Um, And so if you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com. And you can uh, listen to the shows we've done. uh, Listen to So What Can I Eat? If you want to know what not to eat, listen to The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. Um, I'm going to throw this out there as well. Again, it's not a promise or a guarantee, but chiropractic care can help the immune system as well. Do we know if it's going to help COVID-19 or not? No, we don't. But we know that overall, chiropractic care has been shown in many cases to have a positive effect on the immune system. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, just come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, We accept most insurances. Car accidents, if you were ever in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. Whether the car was totaled or the car was dented, you need to come see us because if, if, if there's damage to the body, chances are it's going to uh, parlay into something a lot more serious. If bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other, they wear out. What do you think osteoarthritis is? Osteoarthritis always has a mechanical component. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. So that can be considered a comorbidity when it comes to COVID-19. So do the things that you can do. It's really simple and easy. Uh, if you'd like to make an appointment, you can go to our website, drjoe.com. Again, I'm not treating COVID-19. Don't come in and say I'm treating COVID-19. 
Um, you can go right to the website. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Normally, the first visit is uh, $375. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, going over the x-rays on your next visit, doing a nutritional evaluation with you. We've reduced that to $149. We're not going to do that forever. We're going to have to cut that back soon. Um, but it's our gift to the world to say, folks, this is our opportunity uh, to allow you to start getting treatment. And so many patients, uh, we see a ton of patients, and it's great because most of the patients listen to us and most of the patients get amazing results. So that's why we want to be your doctors. We want to get you well and keep you well. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Dr. Joe Esposito. We live stream a lot of our shows. Uh, we'd love to have you on our live streams as well. Tell your friends about the show, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.